Our greatest successes in life are often found in helping others succeed. Welcome to the Life Masters Podcast, hosted by Tanya Memi. Discover real-life stories from mentors, leaders, experts, and everyday people who devote their lives to helping others succeed. Every episode takes you on a unique journey, an emotional experience, and tells a story never to be forgotten. Tune in to Life Masters with Tanya Memi and start fast-tracking your journey to success today. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Life Masters. I'm Tanya Memi, and today I have on the show Jason Schneidman. He's a celebrity hairstylist. You're the founder of the Men's Groomer Foundation, and your mission now is to change the lives of the homeless one haircut at a time. And I was just on your website, and with all everything that you're doing, um, I have never met a celebrity hairstylist like yourself and um, everything that you're doing, everything that you've been through. So I guess my question to you is, how did your foundation begin? Well, I, I was you know, on a mission early on to have fun and party and surf. Right. I didn't see myself doing much of anything. I wasn't a great student. Um, now, this is way back when you were in your 20s, right? So even before that, like before I started, that. yeah, I started when I was like 14, just kind of surfing and partying and having fun. I grew up in Southern California, so it was just, that's how my head was triggered. You know, I just, that's who I am. And you and, also mentioned too, that you grew up with really great parents too. It's not like, you had a very good upbringing. Yes. And that's right. what's interesting about being an addict or an alcoholic like I don't have that in my family um I don't and uh it's interesting because my head was just triggered the way that it was when I came out of the womb and I'm just who I am and I think people either have that kind of brain it's a creative brain and it's a uh brain of more or never enough and um I find that when I go out on the streets and I meet these addicts that they're a lot like me. And I was lucky to find my way uh, with the help of a program and the people that have paved the way before me. And I was taught that, um, you know, I can be one of those people that help a lot of people and I can stay sober in doing so. So that's kind of how the, how the foundation started. It was an idea of going out with my clippers and, uh, cutting somebody's hair and talking to them about their problems and giving them solutions. Yeah, definitely. Or all, and also being, because from the videos I've watched and the research I've done on you, just their reaction is just being, they want to just be seen and, yeah. and heard and listened to and a part of somewhat normal reality. Like they were so, yeah. the reaction to, what was one of the most incredible reactions you've ever experienced from some of the haircuts you've given to the homeless in Los Angeles? Um, I mean, every time I go out, it's incredible, you yeah. know, um, you, you know, people have this hard wall that's put up and this hard surface. And I think the best part is when they start becoming real and less homeless and more people. And, um, you know, they don't trust a lot of people because you have to kind of be that way on the street. You can't be too open. I met this guy, Michael, who this this video went viral recently. Um, it was like you couldn't really see that he was a good looking dude. And then his beard came off and he became yeah. a mom. I saw and, that. Like, yeah. really good looking guy. Yeah. And it's like his eye was all busted up. And, um, and then I went back and I just saw him recently. And I was like, what was it that? was uh why did you get beat up and he's like well I, I found out how to conduct myself out here now uh differently and I said what was it and he's like not being so open so what happens is in order to survive in these homeless camps or out on the streets you actually become a different person so when I talk to people I try and bring them back and you can see where they kind of come through the other side and they, yeah, and they wow. start trust me and that's when the change i think 
happens or I have that window of opportunity to start talking about their past and, you know, what brought them out here and do they want to change? And I also think too, like people really can relate to you, especially the people that are homeless because you, you were in fact, you were homeless at one point in your life. Yeah. And so the, the drugs and the alcohol brought me to my knees and I had nothing left. And that's the outcome of drugs and alcohol. Yeah. I mean, Bolt is jail, institution, or death. So if somebody is abusing drugs and alcohol, that's the end result. And it's not, it's a fatal illness, you know, it's been diagnosed as fatal, you know. Um, and the number one thing that helps people is other addicts helping another addict. That's been the success. So, right. so I'm like, I'm like a doctor out there. Dr. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a therapist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I want to just kind of get as well is, because um, a lot of people that are listening to this podcast, they're really going through their own hard time. And, um, and some people that I've interviewed have also have been homeless before. And I think some people that are listening to it might be on the verge of that, especially in today, what's going on with today. Everybody's afraid. But how does something like that happen i know you were like you were 14 and you were a surfer and you're doing this thing even though you came from good parents like how does that happen just describe what that was like for you during that time just so that maybe people that are listening if they feel like their life is going in that direction need to maybe just kind of listen to your story and get some information inspiration from it yeah well it starts off as a party and fun and then it's not so glamorous anymore when you're 29 years old and you're sleeping on people's couches and it's not like it was when you're partying at college, you know? Right. And I mean, for me, it was, I was sitting on a seawall in La Jolla and there was guys next to me and I was checking the surf and there was a guy with a brown bag who was like 60. And I just had that burning bush moment where I was like, that's me. I'm like, I need to get out of here. And, um, and then I needed to ask for help. So, and so you, you were know, on the streets though. Like you were literally on the streets at that point. I've been on the streets multiple times because um, I would use my money to get high and not to pay rent. And then I would go homeless and I would just have to, you know, survive. And I was living in cars and I was living in garages. And um, so, you know, it's like what, I mean, the most important thing is to get high, to get well when you're in it, you know, because. Or to escape, you think like, just like as an escape more or. Well, as soon as you drink and use, you don't have to think. So yeah, it's just an escape. Right. So it turns your head off for that, that time. So a lot of these guys that are on the street that are al alcoholics or addicts, they have their routine where they wake up, they panhandle, they go get their alcohol and it, and it feels like they're, they're doing a day's work, you know, and that's yeah. their hustle. So it's a routine. And um, a lot of people don't want help. You know, and I'm just looking for the people that Do. are sick and tired of being sick and tired, like I was, who don't have resources. And I don't have resources for everybody, but the more I show up and the more I meet somebody and talk to them and we develop a relationship, um, there might be an opportunity where I can be like, okay, I'd like to take you here. And, you know, I, I, I use money from my foundation and from my product sales to donate to a sober living that's here in Los Angeles that is a similar structure to the one that saved my life. And it's a year program and you stay there and you don't work until they say you're ready. It's about six months. And then you don't move out until they say you're ready and you move out with two other guys from the house and you continue to do what you were doing in the house. And it's got a really good success rate. So my ultimate goal is to work with these guys that own the house and to pop up more of these houses as we raise money because it's a structure that works. There's a lot of sober livings and rehabs here in LA that just capitalize on people's money and yeah. they don't have free system in place. Um, I've been through those places and I went in and out um, of recovery. It took me four years and then I found this structure that really worked. So that's my goal is to grow my business and to provide more resources for people that don't have resources. I mean, a, this, a, a rehab to make it work is about 1500 bucks yeah. per person. It doesn't have to be 60 grand. 
you know? So that's the, wow. Is that, those are numbers that I am not used to hearing at all. I've heard 40,000, 30,000. Yeah. And, and it's a big hustle with the insurance companies and you get parents that love their kids so much. They'll do anything. So it's like, Oh, okay. 60 grand. And and I'm like, it just pisses me off. So I want to provide some structures that actually work that don't bend people over, you know, and rob them. And so what is, um, cause I don't know a lot about the, the homeless world. I mean, you know, being female too, it's always been slightly intimidating, mm-hmm. but, um, what is that the culture like, like when you were living as a homeless person, like what, what is it like? Can you paint a, a, what a night would be like as, and, and the culture? Well, you I mean, I, I pretty much broke it down for you. It's just getting high and getting by, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, the incomprehensible moral demoralization is brutal. The loneliness feeling is yeah. you know, really tough. So if you stay high, then you don't feel. And that's kind of how it is. And I don't know what it's like now. I've been sober for 16 years. Yeah. And, you know, all I can speak of my experience was um, I was young and I was fearless, you know. So it's it's a lot easier when you're young and fearless. Sure but is. now, <laughs> yeah. When you start getting older, it's like, okay, I can't do this anymore. And luckily I was able to get the help I needed. So what was that day like when you were, you know, your first day in rehab and, and how did you get the money? Was it somebody that reached out to, was it somebody that helped? Yeah. So, you know, my parents were around and they helped me get into the first rehab. And then I kind of depleted that, that ask of help from them. They were kind of fed up and that's kind of normal. Like a lot of people go in and out of sobriety early on because it takes work you know it's like working out you have to go to the gym and so you have to go to meetings you have to like be around people who are doing the same thing and you gotta you gotta you know do the work on yourself yeah uh, so much and so it took me four years and I depleted all my resources and then uh Chris McMillan the guy that owned this hair salon that I was working at he went through this house that I was, I kind of feared because I knew it was a year program. Nobody wants to have to do anything for a year. They just want to like, be like, yeah, I'm done. You know, I'm just going to drink margaritas and I'm not going to smoke crack. Like, you know, it doesn't work like that. You have to emerge yourself in the middle of the pack. It's kind of like wildebeest, you know, when they're running the wheat get taken. So you've got to get in the middle of the pack. And, um, so I, uh, I asked Chris McMillan, I said, Hey, you know, would you pay for my first month and I'll, and I'll pay you back. And it was 1500 bucks. And he took me to rehab and dropped me off and, and I've been sober ever since. So thank God that somebody like him was there to help me. And that's kind of what I'm doing for other people. Yeah. I really, I really do believe like when I do talk to people about what that time was like, there's always something or someone, or was that day when someone actually did lend a helping hand and yeah even with what you're doing, we need people to lend a helping hand, to donate to a foundation like yours and to help the next person that's struggling. Um, especially right now. Especially right now. And so what is, what's like some, what are some, what's some of the processes that you went through internally to feel strong enough to continue with the year program? Like, like if you could give some advice on, you know, mentally how you have to change the mindset or what were you thinking or going through or what realizations did you have? Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple and we, we make it out to be so scary and it's, it's basically, you know, those cliches that you hear one day at a time. Like if I can, Oh my God, I'm never going to be able to smoke weed in Hawaii or, or snowboarding. Like when I love to smoke weed, you know, then I, it's like, I'm already in like there, I'm not in here, like right here in the moment. You right. know what I mean? So if I can continue to just stay in the moment one day at a time, one moment at a time. And right now I'm not going to pick up weed, you know? And, um, I hit my pillow every night and I'm sober another day and you start stringing those days together. And before you know it, you have something solid that you care about and you don't want to throw away. Um, the other thing is, is, Asking for help is huge because yes. this, thing, this isn't something you can do on your own. Like right. it's even proven like some of the biggest like 
entrepreneurs, like bankers who were able to start multi-million dollar businesses could not stop drinking. So it's not just some like, like, you know, little shitty nosed brat kid who's living on the streets. You know what I mean? It's like people, big executives can't stop drinking. So it's like, you got to ask for help and, and people have done it before you. So they're willing to show you like myself how to do it. The other thing is surrender and stop fighting. And that's part of asking for help. And then uh, willingness and you got to mm-hmm. you got to be willing to take suggestions. You got to be willing to go out and help others because helping others makes you feel good and then you don't have to drink and use. You know. Yeah, so, you mentioned that a lot too. I mean, so you yeah. went to uh rehab to get help yeah. obviously, and what you realize is you have to get out there and, and help other, others at a time yeah. that you didn't have anything. Like yeah. that's when it's so, the hardest time to give. Well, it's, it's, if you're thinking about somebody else, you're not thinking about yourself. And that's the disease of alcoholism and addiction is a self-centered disease. So the problem isn't the drinking, it's the thinking. And it's constantly, poor me, I'm amazing, I'm never going to be good enough, don't you know who I think I am? And it's just this me, self, 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 to the point where you're just like, I need to turn me off you know? And so it's a selfish, self-centered disease. So when you start thinking about others, you start feeling good about yourself and you don't realize it. And then you're like, yeah, I'm a good dude. I don't need it. Right. Um, What was that very first day like for you venturing out? You know, you decided that you're going to go help people. And what was that first day like? I mean, I was fearless. I had been a club promoter down in San Diego. (laughs) Yeah. I was passing out flyers to people. I would approach people. Um, and I don't know, for me, I'm not, I'm not too shy. I'm, I'm especially I, everything you've been through. I mean, I'm in your face and I'm like, grabbed a backpack and a clippers. And I was like, Hey, you want a haircut? And people were like, what is this guy doing? And I'm, and I sit him down. And that's when, you know, the magic started happening. So where'd you set up camp first? Where was your first haircut? Right at the right, there was a star underneath me. I forget whose star it was, but it was right on a star. On oh, in Hollywood. Hollywood, the Hollywood Walk Walk of Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the way. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Place. So, and everybody started surrounding me, and I was like, and then after I did that first haircut, I went home and I was like, wow, this was really amazing. I got to start doing this. So then I just kept doing it. And then fast forward, you ended up partnering with the Dominion, huge band that I love. Yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, just stars. And I think you were their hairdresser and that's how you guys all met, right? Yeah, we met. So they hired me for a job uh, and I did their hair for a album cover or something. And we just hit it off. They're so humble and Southern and amazing. Yeah. And like family men, they got kids. And I looked up to them immediately how cool they were because working in Hollywood, you don't get that Nashville, you know, kind of feel. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, you know, and uh, so then we they kept having me come out and, and whenever they had a budget, you know, the, the label was paying for it or whatever, I would show up and I'd do their hair. And, um, and then Matt, uh, the lead singer was sitting in his bunk and he uh, was looking at my, um, which is super cool. Social media has been amazing for me. Somebody told me a long time ago, you need to get out there. And I'm like, I'm not that kind of dude, you know, like I'm kind of reserved and they're like, you have to. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then I started taking off with it. And I, Michael Buble booked yep. me on a job Instagram. I'm like, what did he do? Sorry, you cut out there. He what Michael Buble what on, on Instagram? He booked me on a job and I was like, wow, where'd this come from? And then I got to the job and, and I was like, where did you guys get me? And they're like, we, we follow your Instagram. Oh, nice. So you were actually his, you were discovered for a job like Michael Buble on yeah. by Instagram. Right. And so Matt Ramsey, who's the lead singer of the, uh, or whatever he's in, in old dominion, he was watching my videos on his bunk and he had this song. Some people change, some people do, some people don't, whatever. It's, I think it's called some people some do. People do. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so he hit me up and I was like, wow, that's an honor. I'd be super stoked to uh, tell my story on this video. And it's amazing. The video is incredible. If you guys um, want to watch it, you want some inspiration. Yeah. What a video and yeah. it's a mini documentary video. Yeah. 
it's incredible. And we were able to help a lot of people that day. And um, since then, I think there's hairstylists in Nashville that are starting stuff. And that's been the best thing about this was, you know, me going out to stay sober and help another addict or alcoholic, but snowballing and getting DMs from Austria, Ireland, Spain, Brazil, you know, I ran everywhere, all over the world. People hit me up and uh, they're just like wanting to start stuff in their area to help people. So it's, an, it's really killer. Now, when you go out there, now you have your team of hairstylists as well that you, that go out there with you. So it's not only just you cutting, it's them. Yeah. So I started putting these events together and um, I would put it up on Instagram and I don't really have a team. And uh, I'm like, I'll hit up a couple people and be like, hey, will you support? Are you going to come? And a couple people really love doing it like I do. Oh, they yeah. get the so now they show up. But then I put it out on social media and people hit me up and like estheticians, you know, massage therapists, attorneys. So people are showing up from all works of life and they just come and they come and help. And it always turns out perfect, you know, so it's pretty cool. So how does an attorney help? I mean, that's interesting. So it's not just hairstylists, people that want so to get their services. A lot of people on the street that lose their birth certificates and in order to get a job, you have to have that. So they don't know how to go about getting that. And so oh, there's, wow. yeah, it's just, uh, it's like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When you, uh, when you, uh, God, I'm drawing blanks, but delegating, it's delegating. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know yeah. how to yeah. do it more but I'll hit my clients up and they'll tell me how to do, you know, a mortgage. And so the homeless people are actually using attorneys to better their situation. I thought it'd be a great idea. So we started doing it. And then all along, are you sort of like talking to some of the homeless people that you come across trying to figure out like what would be right for the foundation and what would be right to actually get some treatment and things like that? Uh, yeah. So there's, you know, there's cell phones, there's, uh, there's, uh, medical attention all of that stuff exists in these local resources but the haircuts don't so i've kind of been the go-to to bring that to them and that helps them get a second chance and move into the workforce or even get into these rehabs yeah wow and um how easy or difficult is it for them to get into these rehabs on their own so really difficult to get into rehab on their own. Um, there's a long wait, especially right now. But, uh, you know, I've been able to get some people in to the place that I went through and I start searching other uh, resources for them. Um, but I, we definitely need to grow this, uh, this sober living thing to where we, we can you know, provide housing and recovery, which helps the homeless crisis and helps the people that are struggling from drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And um, so that's kind of where you're moving towards right now to do whatever you can to sort of grow that. Um, I know the formula that works and I have people that can execute it. So it's like the more houses we can get, the more we help the community in itself. Yeah. And so what is, um, like, where are you going from here with everything? I mean, I know that you have your hair, you have your, um, your salon is in, it's in Santa Monica or is it in Marina del Rey? It's in Santa Monica. Yeah. I have a salon in Venice. It's a barber Venice. shop slash hair salon. It's really cool. It's all black with like the white um, yeah. wording on it. I love the way it looks. We, I drive by it all the time because you cut my boyfriend's hair so yeah uh, so i was like there's jason's <laughs> very cool yeah. place. God, it's crazy uh i i we got in there a year ago we were starting to make some good progress and then this all happened but we'll we'll get back in there soon and um you know i designed the whole place it was so fun designing it um i have an amazing shampoo and conditioner that you can yeah. buy on the dot com or you can buy it in, on Amazon. It's color safe, sulfate free. It's high end shampoo and conditioner for a good price, men and women. Uh -huh. I mean, I, this from Beverly Hills, all the salons that I worked at, I hit everybody up and I was like, what is your favorite shampoo? And I put it all together and made the ultimate shampoo and conditioner. And my leading product right now is the men's groomer paste, which yeah. every dude it it goes on dry hair and it doesn't dry stiff so you can just move your hair around and get that messy look which i use on all my clients and um 
the products were, you know, I got James Corden invested and I got Mark Ronson. So they're partners now. And we're just going to keep doing this little ma and pa thing and grow it. And in return with the, with the profits, we're going to help people on the streets. And I that's love it. Yeah. And, yeah. and what percentage of your profits from your, um, from your products go towards your foundation? So as we grow, we continue to donate to Awakening Recovery and a few other places here. Uh, and so it, it goes directly into the sober livings, which gives us a bed so I can nice. take people to there. Nice. And so what, I mean, what was it like for you? You're, so you, you went from like being homeless to finally going into rehab and then helping people. And then how the heck did the business part start? I know you used to work in Beverly Hills too. I mean, you worked for other people before you opened up your own salon. Right. So, uh, Chris gave me an opportunity and it was, there's tons of celebrities coming through. I've been doing men's hair forever since I was 14, you know, I've been doing haircuts for my friends. So I got really good at cutting men's hair. So then when I specialized in just doing men and people were coming through the salon, they were like, who does the best men's haircuts? And so I started picking up Hugh Jackman, Chris Cornell. Um, the list just goes on. Like, you went from I, having no clients to like, yeah. you got it. And Chris gave you a chance. And yeah. so he yeah. places you in his salon. <laughs> like, how yeah. did it happen that, oh, by the way, here's Hugh Jackman. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> well, Chris had gotten sick and he was, was supposed to be in Florida and his agent owned the salon with Chris. So she called me and Chris had said, dude, send Jason. And so it was just like one of those things. And then I showed up and Hugh liked what I did. But it was also, there was an article that was written in the LA Times, or I think it was LA Weekly, that uh, somebody wrote Best Men's Haircut in LA. So I got busy that way. Wow. The front desk, and it was, you know, the 10,000 hours that I put in, well over 10,000 hours of doing men's hair. Like, I, I had a passion for it, and I worked hard. And as soon as Chris gave me the opportunity, I took it, and I continued to work hard. And what happened was the fact that I wasn't, taking two steps back every night with the bottle, I was able to wake up in the morning and be focused and actually pursue these goals and dreams. And I would delegate and I would say, Hey, how do I make products? And I find a client that makes products. And so we just continued to do that. And this has all come from gifts of sobriety. So all of this came from your um, volunteering to cut the to, to cut hair for the homeless and help people in LA well, and there's just one one thing after another opportunities people that you met first and foremost it came from celebrity because I got followers from doing Bruno Mars's hair and I started getting followers so the numbers started get bigger and then it was what I did with that platform yeah. that kind of took me to the next level and and so I used that and then it spread into the service work because there's so many people in this world that have huge hearts and the DMs, oh, that come, the messages that I get, people care, people want to help people. And, you know, humanity is alive and well, you know, and we don't uh, see enough of that though, Jason, like, why is no, that? No. We don't see enough of it. No, we don't because we're on the constant hustle, hustle and bustle and we're looking at Gucci this and fake boobs that, and you know, all that stuff. But, and you know, perfect Instagram, like there's, there's, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I'm going to continue to work on this and I'm working on some projects that are coming up with like a show to show, you know, good in the world and good. people transitions and we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And, and it's going to take off. I can, I, I know in my heart of hearts yeah. that this is, that I'm doing the right thing. So what would you say to people, new entrepreneurs that are scared out of their minds right now? Because people are, there's a lot of pain right now going on. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of uncertainty. What's some advice <laughs> you can give some people that are really struggling right now? I mean, we will come back from this. There's no doubt. It's all about hard work, you know, and we just need to work hard and we'll, we'll be back you know we do have to work a little harder and maybe for a little less yeah and not get so distracted by the uh shiny objects <laughs>
To access the show notes for this episode or to listen to more shows, simply visit www.tanyamemi.com. Master your own life and be inspired to help others to succeed. Join us again next time here on Life Masters.